So uh, humanity, uh, getting back to um, uh, what I was saying, um, I'm new. I'm new at this. Uh, uh, I'm new at this uh, recording uh, this podcast. So bear with me. Uh, some of them will be mixed up. Uh, some of them will flow smoothly. But uh, I was. I, I touched on the uh, mob fruit on how I use that as a uh, substitute. I started out with the dates, and then I uh, went on to the uh, mob fruit, which uh, uh, I discussed in. Um, in the last uh, video, it's uh, it has uh, quite a few supposed uh, medicinal um, medicinal uh, purposes. I've yet to see, uh, I've yet to experience any of that. Uh, specifically, uh, it uh, is uh, supposed to be real good for uh, for uh, uh, inflammation. And I have uh, I, I I wanted it for that I wanted it for that purpose along with the sugar uh, substitution, but I have not experienced any of that. But anyway, uh, in the uh, previous video, I hope I uh, I hope I'm not uh, giving the same recipe over again. But just bear with me as I'm trying to look at this podcasting uh, down pack. The uh, peanut butter recipe that uh, utilizes the uh, monk fruit uh, it uh, calls for. Uh, you can use a fourth of a fourth of a cup of uh, sugar-free peanut butter, or you can also use uh, a cup of uh, peanut butter, depending on the quantity and the size that you're trying to, uh, and you know how many cookies you're trying to uh, get. Uh, and then you want one-fourth uh, cup of uh, monk fruit, and you can taste it because uh, you might want uh, uh, you might want to taste. I mean, a sweeter uh, uh, cookie, and since it's derived from monk fruit only. And I think it's what is it, uh, Zyatol? I may not be pronouncing that right, but uh, uh, that as well. Those two ingredients. Um, and so you'll use a fourth of a cup of uh, the monk fruit, and if you need more, add more, and then uh, uh, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a um, um, teaspoon of baking powder, and. Um, what else is it? Oh, and if you want to use an egg, you can use an egg. If not, I generally use a teaspoon of uh, uh, cream cheese. And you uh, mold the, uh, you know, mix mix the ingredients up together. If you use an egg, only use one egg. And you uh, put the ingredients together. Uh, you can also add uh, vanilla flavoring if you want to. I didn't want to. I just added the cinnamon. And uh, you stir it all up together. You form your uh, cookies. You put your cookies uh, inside of a cake pan, just a regular cake pan. It doesn't have to be anything special or fancy. And you put your cooking spray on it. You put the cookies in and you let them brown on each side for maybe five or six minutes uh, 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 tops. And... Uh, then uh, there you have your sugar-free uh, peanut butter cookies. And then um, my uh, uh, audio got cut off uh, before I could finish talking about the uh, sugary beverages. You can make yourself a uh, really nice sugar-free uh, uh, beverage if you want to. You can use broccoli, broccoli and celery. Uh, uh, and it's amazing. It literally tastes, and maybe just like a... a I want to say a tablespoon of uh, uh, the uh, juice from the orange or lemon. It doesn't matter. Just any fruit of your choice, a tablespoon of that. And you combine uh, one celery stick. You combine uh, one-fourth cup of uh, broccoli, and you put that in your broccoli, put in uh, maybe five or six cubes of ice. You uh, put in uh, one uh I want to say one cup, depending on your blender size or your ninja size, you can decrease that as you see fit. So uh, as it doesn't make a mess up your blade. And then uh, you put in a fourth a cup of monk fruit and uh, blend it together for maybe about, maybe about two minutes. And you and put it in a real nice glass or cup, however you want to drink it. But it really does... Uh, 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 tastes like ice cream uh, it really is it's uh it's really really nice and so uh you can substitute that substitute that for a lot of your beverages that are loaded with carbs and loaded with sugar and uh you know that helps you and and that speaks volumes to what i was talking about in terms of uh uh in terms of diet and lifestyle you know it's not it's not easy 
to uh, let go of your, uh, you know, your beverages, your dishes that you're, that you really, really like. But if you can substitute them with things that you uh, find equally uh, uh, pleasing and satisfying, but yet they're good for you. The celery and the broccoli is good for you. The um, monk fruit, uh, uh, like I say, it, uh, it advertises that uh, it has a lot of different uh, medicinal purposes. I've yet to see any of them, but nevertheless, all three ingredients, well, it's actually four, all four ingredients are good for your health as opposed to uh, 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 drinking sugary drinks uh, um, that uh, are loaded with sugar and carbs. And yet, uh, um, when you do want a sugary drink uh, that's loaded with carbs, you should have it and then go back to your lifestyle. Let the sugary drink not be your lifestyle, but let it also not be something that you deprive yourself of if you want it, because it's harder to stick to uh, anything that you call a lifestyle when uh, you don't like it. And that's the reason why I uh, have to wonder for me in terms of uh, the um, the deprivation aspect, I have to wonder if that was the reason why, you know, uh, I experienced so, many, so much failure with various diets and what have you, because, you know, uh, um, you know, when you eat a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a lot of it is not really tasty, and some of it can be tasty, but you can't get enough uh, to eat the way you want to eat, uh, the way you're accustomed to eating, and that may not be all that well, at least it wasn't for me, but nevertheless, uh, uh, I found myself, oh, the minute I lose the weight, then I'm going back to eating to the eating the way that I uh, was used to. Well, if I, if, if you go back to eating the way you used to, the way you used to is what caused the weight gain and the unhealthiness. And so when you go back, also you're going back to uh, uh, the, um, you're also going back to the uh, foods. I mean, the uh, uh, harmful, uh, harmful, detrimental things that you're doing to your body, as well as not having the um, visual uh, results that you've attained because you're going back to the same things that sent you into the trials of your uh, unhealthiness at first, if that makes sense. And so the reason why I like uh, a lifestyle, this is something that you become accustomed to and you live this out over your life and it's something that you like, something that you enjoy and it's pleasurable. And and for me, I have to wonder if that's not easy, uh, easier to uh, stick to as well as uh, 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 get you attainable results, if in fact that uh, you're able to do that. And remember, you shouldn't try anything. I mean, absolutely nothing without consulting your physician. And uh, maybe the two of you can uh, go through uh, the new uh, eating lifestyle and see if any of it is adaptable to your lifestyle. And, and that's something else I want to touch on. The personalization and the customization is crucial to this eating lifestyle down because what tastes good to me may be horrible to you and uh uh you know, you want to get those seasonings, uh, uh, get, and, and this, uh, this eating lifestyle is, uh, meat friendly. You know, you, you can, you can get your lean cuts of meat and substitute, like I use a lot of mushrooms and, uh, uh, I use a lot of chickpeas, uh, uh, in your store. They may not be chickpeas. It could be, uh, gorbanza beans, but it's the same thing, chickpeas and gorbanza beans. But I use a lot of, uh, chickpeas. I use a lot of mushrooms. Uh, uh, and I use a lot of cauliflower. As a matter of fact, last night I made a deep fried. Uh, uh, I made a deep fried cauliflower. I don't recommend that uh, you, you know, uh, you uh, use uh, a lot of oil. I usually use my air fryer, but yesterday I uh, really had a case for uh, fried food, and so I uh, took um, I took a head of cauliflower and I split it. I split it in half and uh, I I washed it and after I washed it I took uh, another plate and uh, I put uh, half of um, half of uh, cream cheese I split it down the middle and I took the one half of it and I sprinkled uh, uh, pepper uh, and you can use whatever seasoning you want uh, on the cream cheese and then I mashed it together and then I took the um, 
I took the uh, florets after I washed them and cut them, you know, cut them in, uh, you know, into pieces. And the pieces, you know, you know what they're called, they're called florets. And so I uh, coated each uh, individual floret in the uh, seasoned cream cheese. And then I dipped the uh, seasoned, uh, seasoned, I mean, the uh, cream cheese coated cauliflower. I dipped that in the fish uh, seasoning. So you really won't uh, need uh, salt, not unless you really, really are a uh, salt uh, eater. You can add a little salt, but the most fish coatings, they're already seasoned with salt and various uh, herbs and spices. So um, I took the uh, coated, uh, the cream cheese coated cauliflower florets, and I uh, coated it in the um, in the fish seasoning, and then I uh, deep fried it for maybe uh, maybe um, maybe five minutes, uh, five minutes on one side, and then five minutes on the other, and um, then I uh, I also made a uh, I also made a not so spicy uh, chili, and all I did with that is uh, I had a can of uh, chickpeas. I uh, washed and rinsed, and then I took them and I put them in a plate and I pulsed. I mean, uh, not pulsed them. I mashed them. If you're using, if you're utilizing a blender, make sure when you put your chickpeas in, you're looking for a pulse, uh, a pulse-like consistency. You don't want your uh, chickpeas to uh, uh, look like a pancake mixture or, you know, anything, any type of batter uh, uh, type of resemblance. You don't want that. You want it to just, you know, you just, all you want is the uh, chickpeas to be mashed. And so I took that, I put that over in a bowl. I put uh, maybe a fourth a cup of uh, chili powder, uh, black pepper, um, and then, you know, your various vegetables, if you like, you can, you could even put in corn if you want, but, uh, I, I limited, uh, just about everything that I put in. I only put in celery and, uh, celery and onion. I put in, um, uh, uh, maybe, uh, three tablespoons, three tablespoons of, uh, celery, three tablespoons of, uh, onions chopped. And, uh, I, uh, put that over in the, um, I mean, I sauteed the uh, sauteed the uh, beans and and the vegetables together. Uh, in a maybe about a teaspoon of oil. You can use cooking spray, of course, if you want. I sauteed it for maybe about a minute on both sides. I took the chili powder and then sprinkled that along with a teaspoon of paprika, and uh, I sprinkled that on and I seasoned it up for. I mean, I sauteed it for maybe about five minutes, and then I added two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. Hopefully you can find the sugar-free version. And then I uh, put in uh, one tablespoon of open pit barbecue sauce. Hopefully you can find that or something similar sugar-free. And then I... Um added water. You can just use pizza sauce or you can use uh, uh, just uh, tomato sauce. However you want to do it, customize it to where it tastes good to you. I let it simmer for maybe about seven minutes and it was really, really tasty. So uh, uh, if all of your, uh, uh, the condiments that you're adding, if they're all sugar-free along with your chickpeas, you're basically eating, uh, you're eating chili, but you're eating a sugar-free version and you're eating chickpeas. You know, what I'm saying. And so I guess what I'm trying to say, wherever you can take the sugar out, take the sugar out, wherever you can take the carbs out, take the carbs out, you know, uh, as best as you can, lower the caloric content. And so you have tons of recipes out here that don't have sugar. They have lower uh, carbs. They have lower uh, 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 caloric content. So, you know, you can, you know, you can mix and match and and really, really, really come up with a, a version of your eating lifestyle if you want. You can just use, uh, maybe use what I'm saying to you as merely a reference, you know, but just something uh, to get you going. Because as I said, this is going to this this lifestyle eating uh this eating lifestyle is going to be more or less for someone that uh has experienced serious i mean really really serious eating uh you know cravings that are just almost unbearable uh eating to the point to where you want to stop but you can't stop and so when you have something that's equally tasty a good example i like burgers now 
you can take a burger and 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 get you a lean cut of meat or you can take the chickpeas or you can take black beans and what have you and you know you can make a a, a low carb uh low low sugar or virtually no sugar uh burger here's the thing what about your bread you know and so uh that uh uh started me into making my uh what looks like bagels and so and so what i do is uh to make a uh to make a burger i um i start out I start out with the uh one fourth cup, one fourth cup or one cup, depending on how many bagels you want to make. Uh almond flour, uh, as I talked about in part one of the audiobook, uh almond flour has less carbs. Uh oat flour, it has maybe about six six more carbs, six to seven carbs, don't quote me on that, uh, more so than uh, the old flour. Here's the thing, the old flour is more affordable and uh, it also, um, it also has more carbs. So, you know, you do with that as you will, you know, to your lifestyle, you know, if you would prefer uh, to start making your own quick bread and you want something more affordable, uh, oat flour is less expensive than the almond flour. But if you're the one that, you know, the, the affordability is not an issue, but you want to take as many of the carbs out as possible, almond flour is the way to go. So uh, you, you take uh, from one cup to uh, half a cup of uh, uh, almond flour, either oat flour, you're going to add uh, one tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda, but baking powder. And then you're going to uh, add one teaspoon of xanthium gum. If you have not uh, 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 come across part one, xanthium gum is basically a glue. It's an adhesive. It allows you to form uh, form your mixture into whatever you want to form it, and it, it'll make it hold its shape. So if you put a hole within your mixture, the xanthium gum is going to allow uh, the uh, mixture to hold the shape of that hole. Whereas without the xanthium gum, generally your mixture probably, uh, uh, and don't quote me on that, but what from what I've tried, your mixture is just going to go and uh, overlap into like if the left will go into the right or the right will go into the left. The xanthium gum will make it just stay however you shape it. That's the way it'll stay. Here's my well. I'll I'll finish the recipe and then I'll I'll uh, tell you about my my the way I feel about xanthium gum. Okay, so after you uh um after you get your uh one table I mean teaspoon uh and you know the teaspoon is the smaller of the spoons and then the tablespoon is the larger of the spoons and you want a teaspoon the smaller of the uh, spoons you want a teaspoon of xanthium gum. Or depending on how many bagels you're making, you can go with a uh, uh, tablespoon because, uh, you know, if you're adding more of the flour, you're going to need to add more of the xanthium gum. And you'll add one egg and then add your seasonings, whatever your seasonings are, a pinch of salt, or you may want uh, a little bit more salt. You know, you do with that as you will. And uh, after you uh, uh, seasoned it up, season, season your uh, mixture up, you see it's real, it's real simple, nothing complicated and uh, nothing tedious. You'll stir it up and then you'll put it in a pan in a small, uh, you want a small circular formation. And uh, all you do is take the end of a spoon, take the end of a fork, the end of uh, any uh, uh, eating utensil and create a small hole within the middle of each individual uh, circular uh, mixture. And that's going to give you the resemblance of a bagel once it's baked. And you put as many as you can in your pan, a uh, grease pan, of course, uh, or a uh, uh, you use cooking spray and you put that in the oven and then you let your bagels bake uh, for maybe uh, maybe 10 minutes, depending on the, you know, I don't like uh, soft cooked uh, bread, uh, you know, bagels and what have you. Um, if I'm baking them myself, I mean, and I like them uh, almost to the point to where they look like they're almost burnt and I'm sure most of you don't like that so maybe go with 10 minutes uh, on both sides and and like I say just adjust it to your case if you find yourself uh, wanting a softer bread 
you know, uh, reduce your uh, cooking time. If you want a harder cooked bread, uh, elevate your uh, cooking time. Okay, so you're going to bake it on both sides and then there uh, uh, makes the difference in your, uh, uh, your sugar content, your caloric content, your carbs, something easy and affordable. And uh, it, it, it's, it makes a difference as opposed to where uh, you go and get a loaf of bread and, and you know, it's, uh, you know, almost $20 and, you know, you, you know, you get what, maybe 10 slices where you can make this on demand. However, however many times you want your bread, you go and, and whip it up real quick and you know you're doing a sugar-free bread. You know you're doing a, a bread that doesn't have that many carbs and the caloric content is not uh, uh, as bad. And so you make your burger, get your sugar-free condiments, get your vegetables, your, your your lettuce, your tomatoes, however you want to go. And see, here we go back to, you know, lifestyle versus diet. You know, a diet may require you to, uh, you know, go and get the the, the uh, keto bread. And keep in mind, I'm not I'm not trying to uh, take anything away because I love keto bread, but I'm just making a point, you know, in terms of. Uh, affordability in terms of things that, you know, you're going to stick with. You know, you may not want to just keep purchasing uh, uh, keto bread. You may just want something on the whim where you run out of it or however it goes. It just really adapts well to your lifestyle as opposed to a diet, which, uh, you know, just screams temporary, you know, because it's uh, oftentimes it's oftentimes something that you're not going to stick with over time. And so, uh, and, and I do many versions of the bagels. You know, I do uh, a pizza bagel where I add a little bit of uh, pizza sauce and, you know, maybe a little uh, dash of oregano and a little basil. You can do just an onion bagel where you're, uh, you know, finely chopping onions and the same mixture, your same base, and you'll add uh, onions and, and, and what have you. And so, you know, uh, uh, key things that you want to look out for is that deprivation, for me, meal prep. Meal prep is really crucial. On those two months where I had uh, the situation where I had stopped with the eating lifestyle because, uh, you know, it started out in September being my birthday. It says, oh, okay, you know, I'll just, you know, just, just, um, you know, freestyle it. I'll eat what I want and la di da di da di And come to find out after eating uh, in the uh, lifestyle way that I had just adapted, I found myself wanting more of those foods as opposed to the stuff that I had just been eating all of my life. And so, but nevertheless, because of my excruciating uh, pain that I'm dealing with, you know, I found myself not doing my meal prep. So one month quickly led into two months. And so uh, I find my, found myself at the beginning of November just getting back. But uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, my mobility, my mobility changed the second day after I went back to the uh, eating lifestyle. I still have a long way to go, a long way to go in, in, in uh, my uh, the healing, the, the health aspect and the weight loss, you know, and that's something too that you want to stay mindful of. You know, I see people, I see people all the time. They do just the veggie uh, version of a diet or a new adaptation to their lifestyle, or they do keto and the weight just seems to drop off. You see a before and after of these people and it's like, you know, within a month, you almost don't recognize them. And then you go, and you've been adhering to uh some you know your eating lifestyle maybe you're maybe you're three months in now, and you're looking at your weight loss and if you don't watch yourself you'll you know compare your weight loss to someone else's and it's like what you know what what's going on but you know luckily i have a personality and such that i believe in staying in my own uh lane so it's easy for me to talk myself down off the ledge immediately you know look you know individuals differ some people's uh mental um mm, some people's uh uh metabolism is faster than others causing them to burn weight uh, burn calories faster, and so they can eat uh, a larger quantity or maybe uh, different foods, whereas someone else eats the same food, the same amount of calories, and gain a pound. So 
I have to stay mindful of that or I would quickly self-sabotage myself. So I stay in my own lane, you know, however that works for someone else, you know, you're grateful, you know, you just, you know, just, just stay on your own path. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot more that I want to cover. This thing is new with me. Uh, I have a long way to go. And as you can see, the technology aspect of, of this uh, podcasting is challenging for me. I'm getting old. I don't remember like I, uh, like I used to. So I'm hoping, hoping that you'll uh, stick with me. But uh, if you are an individual that, uh, It it has been hard for you. It really has been hard for you. That craving food, that endless eating, you know, you you know, you're listening to somebody that can relate. I mean, not just um, uh, someone that read something in a book. I'm talking about someone that was eating the equivalent. And I, I am not exaggerating. I was eating the equivalent of four individual moderate size meals for four individuals and at the end of the day i was still hungry and uh, i told you and i've i've been saying that over and over and over again i ate so much sugar i would eat a box of intimates a bag of cookies and then those little small miniature uh candies that you get at dollar tree and or family dollar i could eat four or five of those and i'm talking about in the same day and at the end of the day i still craved more sugar and that's almost morbid for people that uh, you know they've never had challenges with eating um um they you know they've they've never uh you know experienced uh the harshness of wanting uh uh to quit eating like that and 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 you just can't and um you know, I'm just hoping that uh, you get a hold to this. Somebody reaches out to you, and uh, there's no, there's no magic to it. There are diets out here that, you know, uh, eating lifestyles that far surpass this, that uh, um, maybe give you greater results, and this, that, and the other. I'm hoping that this may be different from for you because th- this comes from someone that has shared uh, uh, the perspective of eating, endless eating, and endless cravings, and it. Just just, you know, there seemed to be no uh, uh, no solution in sight. You know, I have gotten uh, results. I have gotten, uh, uh, this is a solution for me. And so uh, hopefully, and, and, and the results are so tiny because like I said, I have so far to go. I have so much to learn and so much weight to lose, but I really have gotten results that, you know, there's a difference between when I first came to this new location and I uh, had a teacher shirt like I told you before in part one that uh uh in size uh in width it uh, uh could have been uh, it could have fit the circumference of a baby a uh, a baby uh crib or either a twin size bed and that's no exaggeration I have it I just I have to um cut it down the side and then have someone uh uh what do you call it um screenshot it and then i'll upload it and let you see it so uh you know i uh i won't say again that i'll get you uh uh another podcast tomorrow i will try tomorrow to get you another podcast but know this as i as i go and get it i'll bring it back to you